election. 2023, we have uh, come up with this session on NCF for foundation stage. Uh, in the year 2020, uh, when NEP has been put forth uh, by the Central Government of India and the Edu Ministry of Education, they have literally given us uh, the proper bif uh, bifurcation of the classes uh, into four stages. That is, Balavatika uh, 1 to grade 2, it is foundation stage. 3, 4, 5 is preparatory stage. 6, 7, 8 are middle school and 9 to 12 are secondary school. So in this specifically in foundation stage, which is from nursery to grade 2, plays a significant role in the cognitive, physical and all over holistic development of the students. So in the document, which is nearly about 300 pages and more, NCF foundation stage, uh, what all an educator is supposed to do as well as how the educator is supposed to coordinate with the parents of the students have been specified very clearly. <laughs> so this is a small attempt uh, from the end of SNTTC and its wonderful resource persons as to give the gist because reading a 300 pages document is not an easy task for anyone. So here our resource persons have read it completely and they have, you know, like condensed the matter as per the necessity of the teachers of the current 21st century. And they're bringing it for you all uh, today. And this will this will be going on till 29th of October. So without taking much more time of you all, uh, let us immediately start with the session. And firstly, I would like to welcome Mrs. Aarti Killan. Uh, Ma'am is a principal of Sagar Public School, Gopal. Uh, she is also a CBSA resource person. Uh, above all that, she is the advisor and core member yeah. for SNTTC. Uh, we welcome you, Ma'am. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. So, a uh, hearty good evening to everyone. NCF, National Curriculum Framework, as sir has told us for foundational stage. So under the ages of SNTTC, we are here to take up. So to start with, what... Aarti ma'am, kindly unmute yourself. I've muted all the participants. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you once again. So to start with, National Curriculum Framework for the foundational stage is developed because of the vision of NEP, National Education Policy 2020, and it is basically to enable its implementation. Our first slide says, what is the basis for NCF? The very first chapter establishes the foundation. Next slide, sir. Establishes the foundation of national curriculum framework. So I'm here for the preamble. I'm going to introduce the first chapter, which actually Stage. When I say foundational stage, it means the children from three to eight years. And this is the first stage of the school, you know, five plus three plus three plus four curricular and pedagogy structure. When this restructuring had been there, the first stage is the foundational stage. Here we focus on early childhood, childhood care and education, and it is deeply rooted in Indian traditions. It is fully responsive to the glorious unity and diversity of India. The key components. The key components states that centrality is the play. Children have to learn through the playway method. And there is a crucial role of family and communities in the child's development. And when we talk about vision and core principle, it outlines the NCF. I mean, it will help us to change the practices, the practices that we have in the present education system. And it is not only the idea, it is the implementation. Next slide, sir. Early childhood care and education. It is generally defined as the care and education of the, the children from birth to eight years. 
critical early years why we say they are critically early years because the first 8 years these are vital or truly critical for the lifelong physical cognitive and social emotional growth that means in all the dimensions if i talk about brain development then researches have shown that 85% of the brain develops or development occurs during the i mean up till the age 6 so appropriate care proper stimulation it is essential during this period for the healthy growth or healthy brain development non non linear learning what does it mean again the researches have been there the children up till the age age of 8 they tend not to follow the linear development our regular processes the age based educational procedure so what is required here then we have to make flexible learning approaches and it is very very critical at that for this particular age the foundational stage that is ages 0 to 8 we have to work on the home environment and the institutional setting now what is the institutional setting because the children up till this age they may be from they may be in the crèche they may be there in the anganwadis they may be there the that is the early primary education between 6 to 8 here we need to focus on their motor skills we need to work upon their emotional expression communication and social interaction that's all about institutional setting and it, when it is home environment it is basically talking to them playing with them and sensory activities are important at this particular age and we ensure health safety and cognitive stimulation in the home environment next now i'm sure we all have understood that basic method over here is play based learning. we have to develop social skills through during the play time only now keys during 3 to 8 years it all range from nurturing curiosity creativity teamwork empathy social interaction playfulness and all these things will come up during the play based learning so up to age 3 it is only the home and a large proportion of the uh, students they are children they spend significant time after the age 3 either in the play schools or the anganwadis so we can use the this particular age to promote social interaction to develop their communication to have ethical development cultural appreciation and the respect for the peers and teachers let me tell you the i mean nep 2020 aims at providing high quality school or value based education in this particular age group next importance of literacy and numeracy those who have learned nep they will understand how literacy and numeracy is important at this particular age and up till this we have to make them learn alphabets languages in fact up till the age of 6 students can learn any language may then numbers counting shapes colors and we have to emphasize on their indoor and outdoor play play we have to give them art maximum scribbling can be there puzzles can be taken up and the best way to spend time with these children is to have puzzles with them this will develop their logical thinking this will end up with their critical thinking as well as creativity and remember the gross sensory and the motor movements another foundation at this particular age is fln that is foundational literacy and numeracy it is again a key goal of nep 2020 next now when i am again and again saying key goal so what is the goal over here every child the who has the age between 3 to 8 should have access to free safe high quality and developmentally whatever is appropriate ecce by 2025 this is our goal each child up to the age 8 should have access to free and safe high quality education equal opportunities that is called equity so ecce over here serves as an equalizer which allows children from all the background to flourish academically and socially and yes we all need to collaborate 
where the teachers may i know who all are the stakeholders i'm sure everybody will be here i mean we all are from the education community who all are the stakeholders come on teachers unmute yourself teachers parents communities and then policy makers the management we all are the stakeholders and we all have to collaborate to ensure holistic yes as yeah somebody has raised hand salma ma'am anybody okay so we all need to collaborate so that we all can work for the physical cognitive and the social emotional development of our children and these are the goals of our nep 2020 now what is the rational what was the reason for investing in this particular age group it has been said that this is the best investment for the future high quality ece is one of the most important investment it this is again another research then we can impact the brain development already it has been proved that maximum 85% of the brain develops in this age only so cognitive and social emotional stimulation it leads to better learning outcomes and yes it reduces learning delay early the intervention is better the learning will be it will reduce the development delay and improve the overall quality of the life next so curriculum in ncf for foundational stage what are the goals objectives it means what students should learn what is the syllabi and content it means the knowledge and the skills to be taught what are the pedagogical practices used by the teachers then assessment is the evaluation of the student learning and teaching learning materials over here refers to the tools which are like textbooks workbooks play materials school and college classroom practices will involve the daily routine practices of the students and the learning environment and culture it is the atmosphere which is created where the where the institutions are there to support learning coming on to the factors affecting curriculum it refers to the teachers capacities capacities means the skills and the trainings of the teacher involvement of the parents and community that means the role of family and community how they can support the education institution access and resources it means availability of whatever educational resources are there and the infrastructure and the last is administrative support where the educational officers and the support they structure they actually help in facilitating the education so the curriculum framework in ncf refers to unity in diversity here it reflects and nurture india's diverse culture while ensuring unity at the same time what is the role of states the states have constitutional mandate they have to provide high quality education and it is all tailored to unique context you know to to the uh, to their unique context and lastly we need to empower nep powers educational institutions and educators to develop curricula which is suited to their local needs the purpose of curriculum framework is basically guiding principles to provide foundation for developing diverse curricula it has to ensure quality and equity so that we can harmonize curricula so curriculum to maintain quality education everywhere it has to be same everywhere and last is curriculum development which is a guideline to develop syllabi play material workbooks textbooks and assessment methods and the last will be the characteristics of ncf next the character characteristics of ncf are they are all research based research based means latest researches have been there on the early childhood it is teacher centric it is focused on the needs and the perspectives of the teachers it is understandable and usable 
It is designed to the practical and relatable teachers, student leaders, and educational functionaries. And it is based on real life illustration. It includes practical examples, which aids to implementation in various educational contexts. And when we talk about practical and aspirational framework, it is relatable to all the institutions. It is designed to fit the realities of the current institutions while being aspirational for future improvement. It, it takes teachers, it considers teachers as torchbearers. So it emphasizes the central role of teachers in implementing changes. And last, it is rooted in reality. Again, yet it is aspirational. It balances the current implementations of many institutions with aspirations for excellence in education. That was all about my effort in connecting to you with the curriculum Nash NCF that we have studied it before to the foundational framework. Thank you, sir. That was all about the first chapter. Thank you so much, Aarti Ma. Uh, it was really, uh, you know, like uh, clear cut uh, about how you have brought about the uh, things uh, to the teachers because, uh, you know, like uh, reading the complete text and uh, bringing it uh, into a condensed state as to make it clear to the uh, teachers is a very important factor over here. And no doubt uh, that's the reason uh, you are a wonderful resource person. Uh, and moving on, thank you so much. With a note of thanks, I would like to move on to the next part of today's webinar. That is the next session, uh, section of the first chapter, the development of early childhood care and education in India and the world. And this is going to be uh, taken up by Mrs. Abhilasha Verma. Madam is the headmistress of a CBSE school based in Tamil Nadu. She is also a core member of... Uh, SNTTC and also a resource person. Uh, the screen is all yours, Abhilash Shama. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, Aarti, ma'am, uh, wonderful uh, first chapter you have taken and in a very precise manner. Uh, before I start, I would like to ask questions uh, from the trainers here. Like, what do you understand? What is the importance of early childhood care and education in India? So, anybody would like to answer? You can unmute yourself and answer. What is the importance? Why early childhood care and education is important in our education nowadays? I hope I am audible to everybody, sir. Yes, ma'am. You please just uh, get on with your presentation, ma'am. Maybe right. uh, people are not in a position to give the answer. All right. So, early childhood care and education. It gives importance. Uh, sir, you can change the slides. Yeah. Uh, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Saloni, ma'am. All right. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, so I believe it is very important for uh, uh, the topic has been taken that why childhood or why important your question is uh, ma'am as we as we go theoretically also and practically we also we always listen from our elders also ki aapka prenatal time bhi both important and postnatal time bhi important hai. so i believe ki usse ek link joda hua ki 0 se 5 years mein jo bacche ki brain development hai wo hi jo usko environment mil raha hai वो ही उसका एक बेस रखता है उसकी ओवरऑल लाइफ के लिए सो आई बिलीव दैट इज द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ दिस चाइल्डहुड एंड द गवर्नमेंट हैज टेकन दैट इनिशिएटिव आल्सो या एब्सोल्युटली थैंक यू सलोनी मैम फॉर द नाइस प्रिसाइज आंसर यू हैव गिवन टू माय क्वेश्चन आई रियली अप्रिशिएट सो इट रियली डील्स अबाउट द ओवरऑल डेवलपमेंट और द होलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ अ चाइल्ड सो लर्निंग इज नॉट मियरली गैदरिंग इंफॉर्मेशन but development of inner self and the knowledge gained should be benefited to an individual as well as to the society. So here the holistic approach have five layers of development that is called Panchakosha. Panch is five. Panchakosha Vikas. First one is Anmaya Kosh that is related to the physical layer. Pranmaya Kosh related to life force energy layer. Manomaya Kosh 
it is related to mind related to the cognitive development of the child next is vigyanmaya kosh that is related to intellectual layer intelligence level of the child anandmaya kosh is the inner self inner development so the indian vision of education has been broad and deep including the idea that education must foster both inner as well as external development of the child learning about the external world should be in consonance with learning about one's inner reality and self so inner growth as well as our overall uh, overall external growth is also important in, uh, for a uh, foundational uh, stage child so next slide please so what are the practices of panchakosha vikas first i'll take upon the physical development that is sharirik vikas uh, physical means uh, sharirik vikas so it focuses on age specific fitness flexibility and strength of the body of the child it emphasizes emphasizes balanced diet which is very very important for a child growth traditional games yoga and exercise for the motor skills development of the child and it also builds personal health and habits for long term well being so when the child in initial stage he is physically strong physically well developed it will enhance both external as well as inner growth of the child education wise also and physical development also so next one is development of life energy pranic vikas so it deals with balances energy enthusiasm and smooth functioning of bodily system it activates the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system to promote vitality it is related to our energy level pranic vikas that is development of life energy so next slide please so another uh, layer is emotional and intellectual development under emotional and mental development that is mansik vikas this is the hindi term mansik vikas it relates enhances the concentration emotional regulation will power and courage of the child courage means we can enhance we can check this in uh, in the class in the assembly we can ask them to uh, take up uh, uh, in front of the whole group they can uh, stand and speak something that courage should be there to speak in front of everybody so th uh, that is emotional stability mental development of the child is very very important like in a group they will speak everything but individually how much well developed the child is so it deals with the uh, emotional and mental development of the child it nurtures virtues like peace happiness and creativity through art culture and literature these words like peace happiness creativity it, it is all related to the emotional development of the child these are the keywords so intellectual next one is intellectual development bodhik vikas sir it encourages observation experimentation and analytic thinking uh, uh, that is why the teachers uh, in this foundational stages they, they use tlm which are very attractive so that the children they observe they analyze the things and they remember that is more important that it it uh, in this foundational stage whatever initially the child will learn it will be like feeded in their mind and it focuses on abstract reasoning linguistic skills creativity and logical reasoning so the child will be able to reason ask question creativity will be increased and enhanced so next slide please now last one is uh, spiritual development which is chatsik vikas spiritual growth it focuses on cultivating happiness love compassion and spontaneity it encourages turning awareness inward for self reflection freedom and aesthetic appreciation it also promotes moral and ethical development as a part of holistic education which is very very important for a child of foundational stage the next slide please
Now, enlightened Indian perspective range of insights. When we see upon this, the role of memory, so what contribution the Ayurvedas have given? It is the holistic understanding of ch child care, integrating biological, physiological and cultural approaches. So it is overall, it is uh, additional to uh, adding the overall biological also, psychological also and cultural also. The integration is from all overall, from all the three, four sides. Now notable, uh, noticeable practices are samskaras, the rites of uh, passage like Anna Prashan, Vidya Arambam. Vidya Arambam means like when the child starts his first day of the class or when the child goes for admission. So Vidya Arambam is their first day when the child goes to school. It is aligned with the modern child care practices and the use of herbs. Vachya herb improve, uh, improves speech and cognitive abilities of the child. Next is Ayurveda and child care. The current cognitive science research indicates that Smriti, it is related to both working memory, like what pre the present and long-term memory, which plays an important role in cognition and comprehension. So modern relevance is cognitive science confirms that memory is critical for learning and techniques like pra practice, deep processing and forming associations aid retention. It all includes to the Ayurvedic and child care. And the last one is the Gurukal system. The Gurukal system is the oldest system, the oldest practice of the education system. And it's uh, uh, really, uh, we know very well that whole, it, it indicates the holistic learning, uh, one of the oldest system in the world, fostering deep relationship between the teacher and the student. And when the teacher, most of us are here, the teachers, educators. So the teacher and student relationship is very, very important. And after that comes the bonding of education. Learning environment. Emphasize learning through exploration, self-examination and application of knowledge. So next slide, please. So these are the people who have really motivated us during uh, for the education system and their contribution are really remarkable. Uh, so the key Indian thinkers on ECC are Jiddu Krishnamurti. Uh, he has advocated for inner freedom education as a means for societal uh, transformation. Then Savitri Bai and Jyot Jyotiba Phule, he, uh, they advocated for girls education and education for marginalized communities. Then Rabindranath Tagore, we all, we all are very familiar with this name. Shantini Ketan is uh, now also it is flourished and a very remarkable place for education systems. It focused on learning from nature, promoting creativity and joy in education. The next personality, the pioneer thinker is Sri Aurobindo. He has contributed his uh, integral uh, education focused on physical, vital, mental and spiritual development. Another pioneer thinker is Swami Vivekananda. He has emphasized holistic development of body, mind and spiritual through self-knowledge. And Mahatma Gandhi, uh, the most important and one of the most remarkable pioneer thinker on ECC, all they, uh, all of them, they have really worked on the education system. And many pioneer and thinkers have contributed to educational thought in India when we really were not introduced with the term ECCE or such educational related terms. Most of their concerns in education went far beyond the immediate into questions of ethical living and nation building. So next slide, please. The evolution of ECC in independent India, how it has started. 1953, the earlier initiatives, establishment of preschools in primary school setting. 
1953, the first pre-school uh, establishment started. The 1964 Kothari Commission recommended preschool centers and about Kothari, uh, Kothari Commission, I would like to add on that it is the commission under the chairmanship of D.S. Kothari submitted, he submitted the report on 29th June 1966 for India's first national education policy and it intended to promote a language of the southern states to South Indian states for Hindi speaking states. They introduced the three language system. And uh, the last one is Integrated Child Development Scheme, ICDS. It was launched in 1975, providing health education and nutritional services for child under six years. That is midday meals to start in. So hope it, the, thing, uh, the topic is clear to everyone. Any questions, yes, anybody? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank That's you so much, side. Abhilasha, ma'am. It was uh, precise and clear. Uh, thank thank you. you so much for that wonderful uh, presentation. Now I would like to call upon Mrs. Jayavani Jayaraman, uh, social science uh, educator from Tamil Nadu, uh, who is here to share the vision of NEP 2020 that has been quoted in NCF Foundation stage. We welcome you, ma'am. The screen is all yours. Yeah, good evening, one and all. It's uh, very well explained, ma'am. Now, uh, um, the next slide. So, now the topic is about vision of uh, national education policy 2020. And we'll be seeing about the transformation of India and as its core value. So, before I would like, I would like to start with the proverb in Tamil. Aindil valayadudu, aindil valayama. The Meaning of this proverb is, if a plan cannot be straightened in the age of five, in 50 years, it cannot be do it. Uh, it is flexible. So the foundation is very, very important. Uh, so foundational stage of education is very important. That's what they have been emphasis over here. So if we, if we say about the transformation of India, we are talking about the Bharat. So how it has been like by providing a high quality of education, to all and thereby by making India a global knowledge superpower. And what core values we are expecting over here is to identify the spiritual thought, individual thought and deeds and commitments to the human rights. And we just want to be uh, um, like a respect for our diversity and respect for the local contents and pedagogy and policy and everything we have to be, uh, we have to value uh, the education. So the next slide, sir. So here we just comes to the paradigm shifts. So here we are just having the multidisciplinary and holistic development. And next is about the critical over road learning and the new curricular and the pedagogical structure. So when we talk about this multidisciplinary and holistic education, here what is our goal in the sense we are just wants to concentrate overall uh, um, the capacity of the child. We should not just depend upon that. Uh, we should not in uh, what to say. We should not just make the children to uh, emphasize that uh, uh, no separations beyond to between arts and science and social like that. We should not separate either it is a curricular or co-curricular or extracurricular. Everything should be in neutral and equity of weight should be there and uh, very. Uh, the specific thing what we are saying about the critical thinking is the critical thinking that the children should not wrote memory their children according to this uh, uh, 21st century skills you no know, all the children have uh, i mean uh, uh, imitating habits all all those things so the key concept of it is that they have to shift from the assessment values and they have to be very keen to understand the concept level of learning and the next one is about new curricular and pedagogical structure is uh, already we have told about the um, pedagogical structure about what it has been here is we always have that five plus three plus three plus four design as our new curricular and when we talk about this foundational stage we are focusing on the play-based learning. The children should learn everything by their play method. And preparatory stage, we were saying, means 
the children has activity based learning the children should focus on the activity based learning and the next one about the middle stage the children to, uh, should have a deeper discussions and more abstract concept when they go for the middle stage and they when go for the secondary stage the children should have a depth the knowledge on the focus and analytical thinking and uh, and uh, they have to have the aspirations and flexibility of choice of subjects for the uh, students so the paradigm shifts in the educational policy is clearly describes that they want to have a um, uh, choice of their subjects for the students what they want to learn and what they wish to learn the next one sir So the foundational stage, stage guiding principle of national education policy that what they are uh, say, stating here is every child is capable of learning. Every child are being of learning um, uh, uh, according to their circumstance or uh, their birth of the background. Every child is capable of learning of their own. That's what they are telling about the individual learning pace also. Each and every child glow, uh, grows and learns at their own speed. For example, the child, sometimes we see the infant, no, eight months itself, it will start crawling. And sometimes some of the children, I mean, some infant won't crawl at the age of eight, they'll crawl at the age of six. So each and every child has a capacity to learn at their own speed. And the children as a researchers, the children are really the researchers because they, lo they learn themselves, they are their own learners the children are their own learners they will be thinking according to their perception and they learn the things differently and uh, when um, <clears throat> social beings we see you no know, the learning occurs through the observation imitations and collaboration the children will learn from the others imitate and uh, they imitate sometimes you no know, we'll see the children will imitate the others so the children will learn from the social beings also and play and activity learn based you no know, primary ways of children as really experience and makes them to experiment in the next level so play and activity uh, based learning helpful like children to do their activity and concept oriented uh, learning also so found Guiding of principles for the foundation stage is based upon each individual um, attention. The next slide, sir. So the next one will be the role of teachers and families in early childhood care and education. To be say about the role of teachers and families, it plays a very important and vital role. The teachers should facilitate and mediate the learning of the children and their and they should be an open-ended questions and enabling the explorations for the children uh, for the children and the family and community are the partners in this process of learning in each and every stage of the children family and community plays a very important and vital role and uh, this stage is a very care and emotional learning method and strategy should be used the teachers are seen as a caregivers and must create an emotionally supportive learning environment. If we see, you know, the teachers should be very sensitive and responsive to the needs and the moods of the children. The children, at, I mean, the teachers at this age, they have to act according to the mood of the children in the classroom activities so that the children will have a specific bond with the uh, teachers also. The next slide, sir. So the recent initiatives on national education priorities, it's about Nippon Bharat over here. They are specifying that the Bharat, <clears throat> the Nippon Bharat mission for attaining the goals of foundational literacy and numeracy. So the what we are just uh, initiating over here is we have to focus on strategic implementation to address the learning losses from the pandemic. If we say about the things, no, that <clears throat> from the uh, now we are just ensuring that everybody has to. That means the all the children has to complete their. Um, excuse me, sorry, one minute. Sorry for the inconvenience. Again, I'm back. There is a slight power off and came back. Yeah. 
So the first, again, I'm saying about the key initiatives of, about the Nippon Bharat. If we say about the Nippon Bharat, it's the national mission for attaining the goals of fund, uh, fund, uh, foundational literacy and numeracy. Here, we just focus on strategic implementation as well as a clear indication of the necessary structures and roles and responsibility and critical for meeting the goals outlined. And when we talk about uh, uh, the uh, curricular and uh, goals of I mean, uh, the national curriculum, we are just focusing on the uh, the things which has been uh, in the pandemic. We have to recover it and we have to make the aims to achieve. And the next slide, sir. The next initiative is by Vidya Pravesh. And when we talk about this Vidya Pravesh, uh, that is a three-month play-based school preparation module for children entering the grade one. To help overcome the gap in learning, a three-month play-based school preparation module has been proposed and intimate measures in this Vidya Pravesh. So here we focus on well-being, cultural diversity, and ethical values of the children over here. The next one will be the Bal Vatika. The Bal Vatika, we can say it as Anganwadi or we can say it as a Palwadi also here. Here we just focus that the prayer at the age of every five-year child will move to the preparatory class of Bal Vatika. So overall, when we say about these three initiatives is being helpful for the foundational stage, stage by stage learning in all those things. So the next slide, we just... Yeah, here. One year preparatory close before the grade one with an ECCE qualified teacher focus on cognitive and uh, linguistic competencies needed for reading, writing and uh, number sense. And NCIT has developed a guideline for Balvatica and preschool education with the um, <clears throat> developed number sense through a play-based approach. So Balvatica will be a play-based approach for the children. And overall conclusion we see that the NCF aim is to build a curriculum framework for the foundational stage that realizes the goals of NET 2020, taking into an account that extensive worldwide research on ECC, leveraging the rich traditions of India and building on the recent initiative and ready launched by the Dipun Bharat and Vidya Pravesh and everything. Overall, the National Education Policy 2020 state that the foundational stage begins at the age of three and ends at the age of eight, that with five years of schooling from preschool to grade two. Children should therefore begin grade one at the age of six years. Thank you all. Yes, now I would like to call upon Mrs. Jyoti Ayer. Uh, to give us a glimpse about uh, how children learn at foundational stages. Before that, I would like to really appreciate Mrs. Jaiwani Jairaman for the precise, uh, you know, method of uh, forward the information for the teachers. Thank you, ma'am. Jyoti, ma'am, the screen is all yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Jaiwani, ma'am. And thank you, Arti, ma'am, and Abhilasha, ma'am, also. Very uh, precise and very specific, all the points. Next slide, sir. So we'll talk about how children learn at the foundational stage. So we already talked about what our aims are. Now we'll talk about how it naturally happens, how naturally children tend to learn at these stages. So... Uh, the first thing is that yeah, we need to remember they are natural learners. They are naturally curious. Anybody who has kids at home knows this, right? They want to get into every nook and cranny, probably more interested in things that they're not supposed to touch. But uh, it is something that is uh, feeding their curiosity. I think uh, somebody said yes as well. Correct. Exploring every corner. Exactly, Saloni, ma'am. Um, so that eagerness to explore that curiosity that activeness that um, that exploration is something that is actually helping them learn as well so we should not curtail that we should encourage that instead second thing is learning through play now play enables children to learn 
through first hand experience right simple things even uh, at a even younger age when they are standing up and they fall that gives them something to learn okay this is probably not the best way to you know just directly stand maybe i'll catch hold of something and stand so simple things like that also they learn so running jumping experimenting they problem solve even when they are playing with each other they have one ball two people want to play what will they do that's a problem solving thing right so in the beginning they will just be playing next to each other slowly they'll start to play with each other then there is active learning here there is like social cultural experiences they gain and what they do is they adjust their perception and make sense of the world through you know interaction with peers adults they look at how they literally look up to you how you behave is what they will learn so instead of telling them don't shout you don't shout that modeling is very important next slide sir um play when um, we talked about importance of learning through play in the previous slide expanding a little bit on that playing um as work now what we assume is oh they are not studying they're just playing we often use this terminology probably even as mothers we do this where we say oh they're just playing they are not just playing that just play is teaching them a lot they are engaging actively they are exploring they are interacting with others and that is how they learn and um when we say play what do we mean there are four things that are important here one they should have choice they get to decide their goals and activities uh, um we'll talk about specific kinds of play but right now generally speaking when we say play they should they should have a freedom of choice autonomy they should also have um a, not should have but they will naturally have a sense of wonder because that sense of curiosity and exploration that helps us think critically as well um i want that ball but it's inside the box i'm not able to open the box very easily what should i do should i ask an adult should i try a little more should i bang the box on the floor this might seem like very simple things to us but those are critical thinking skills those are problem solving skills that they are learning um so one slide back please they also need to um talk have joy in what they learn because that is otherwise what's the point right and also we are learning all the five skills that ablasha ma'am talked about through play next slide sir. um now talking about um play based learning activities now here there will be planning that they learn that is they uh, just, uh, learn to organize imagine create you can see the children playing with blocks there they learn to problem solve i already addressed this earlier they learn creativity because they um, experiment with new things and they also learn communication because by this stage they have already started communicating um now there's also different types of play like i told you free play would be where the child gets to decide what to do and it gets to direct how the play will be guided play is child led but the teacher kind of is trying to teach something through the play so it is directed or facilitated by the teachers although it is child led whereas when we come to the last which is structured play teachers are directing it completely it is completely directed by the teacher and the reins are kind of in the teacher's hand so maths language we can learn, uh, teach through play coming to the benefits why should we do it there is active participation like i already said many times now holistic development all the um, domains of our development are being touched and positive relationship this is not just with their peers but with even family with teachers that's why we often say right that uh, next slide sir that we should um, you know talk about things with children we should play with children it's very important uh with that i come to the end of my session uh the next section will be uh, led by uh, mrs reshma sata sir back to you thank you thank you jyoti ma'am and i would like to welcome uh, reshma ma'am to take over the session yeah thank you very much sir uh, so let us see the context of schooling at the foundational stage 
uh, influential factors in education, families, peers, communities, environment, and education system, including teachers. These are the five influencing factors. They play a significant role in children's learning. The influence of these factors changes as children grow, with family being the central infancy and peer influence increasing in later childhood and young adulthood. Curricular structure, NEP 2020 outlines a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 curricular and pedagogical structure for ages 3 to 18. NCA for the foundational stage emphasizes age-appropriate education for ages 3 to 8, highlighting care as the educational foundation. Next slide, sir. Yeah, let us see the significance of family and community. Uh, we know that family and community are very important for the development, overall development of the child. So role, what is the role of family? Children grow in environments with both immediate and extended family support, grandparents, neighbors, Family relationships ensure adequate nutrition, social engagement, and emotional support. What is the impact on development? Stable and nurturing families contribute to healthy development and positive learning. Quality parent-child relationships are powerful predictors of children's learning and development. Collaborative partnerships, schools, families, and communities must work together as partners in a child's development and learning. Next slide, sir. Now let us see the centrality of the local and Indian context. First is cultural integration. Children's experiences with local stories, songs, games, and cultural rituals should be included in the curriculum. Constructualized curriculum. Curriculum must be rooted in children's life experiences, reflecting their cultural and social context. Education should be relevant, relatable, and effective in incorporating local culture traditions and languages. Language development. All languages should be welcomed in the classroom. Children should be encouraged to express themselves using home languages, enhancing language skills and cognitive development. Next slide. Sir. Uh, now let us see what do we mean by institutional diversity and ground reality. A variety of learning environments. Children aged three to six years may attend Anganwadi, Balwatika, standalone preschools, or larger schools with grades one and two. Children aged six to eight years may be in schools with only grade one, or those that also include preschool classes. Diverse infrastructure. A different institutional settings provide varying infrastructure, resources, and teacher qualifications. Teacher recruitment, professional development, and responsibilities vary across the environments. Curricular continuity. Curriculum and pedagogy should maintain continuity from age three to eight, accommodating differences in the institutional structures. The NCF is designed to be applicable across all foundational stages and institutional settings. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Okay, with this, uh, I come to end of my slides. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Reshma, ma'am. Uh, it was really, uh, you know, like uh, useful as to know about different, uh, you know, like setups of uh, what do we say, like uh, learning that happens in the school. And no doubt you have uh, brought it very precisely and uh, in a manner that uh, everyone can easily understand. So, dear participants, uh, so that was all about uh, Chapter 1 of National Curriculum Framework Foundation Stage. So, we really appreciate your participation and we are very happy to have you all here. And from the end of SNTTC, I would like to take just two seconds as to appreciate all the resource persons who have taken up this session today. Mrs. Arthi Killan, Mrs. Abhilasha Verma, Mrs. Jaiwani Jairaman, Mrs. Jyoti Ayer and Mrs. Reshma Sata. Uh, now, uh, the people who wish to grab a certificate for this particular session, uh, you can, you know the uh, process, most of you know the process uh, here, like you have to send uh, rupees 50 to the phone number 990-892-5730. Yes, so this is my number, uh, you can send uh, 50 rupees towards the certificate to this particular number and kindly mention your name clearly. If you are particular about Miss 
Mrs. and Mr. Please do add that also. And send a screen, send a screenshot of the payment to this particular number through WhatsApp within 24 hours. Okay, please note this within 24 hours. Maximum by tomorrow morning you will be getting. If not, within 24 hours, you will be getting your certificates to the same WhatsApp number. So that's how it is. So thank you so much, one and all. In case if anyone have a feedback uh, to share with us, you can please share within one minute or so. Yeah. Those who voluntarily would like to come forward and share. Yes. Salonima. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I do have a query. Can I ask for the resource post? Please, please. Thank you so much, Ravi Khan, sir. Uh, so firstly, for thank you for the wonderful session. It's well organized too. So my question from a street resource person now, uh, for example, that I have done my entity uh, five years back. And that year I have learned that uh, the age group is three to six. So we have taken zero to six lot. So my question uh, is ki why it is shifted from zero to eight. Uh, my question, I have attended many workshops and I have asked the same question to the resource person also. So she have given me a 50% kind of explanation transition so it is required in first and second grade so i asking the esteemed resource person if they can help me out ki why zero to eight not uh, three to six so my question is that so okay who would like to answer this question from the resource persons sir i'll try yes ma'am please May I try, sir? Sir, yeah. I believe it, uh, it is because of the physical, cognitive, and emotional development of the children, the kind of motor skills required, kind of this kind of soft skills they required to pick up. It is more or less the same through playway methods. It is more or less the same through, I mean, like they have actually, it is not, I must not say compartmentalized, but at the same time, they have made them uh, on the basis of the kind of development they have, whether it is mental, whether it is physical, whether it is emotional development. So on the basis of that, they have divided this five plus three plus three plus four. So up till five, it is now when the child reaches class two, when uh, the next three will be three to five class, you know, the class and then th three to five grade. And uh, then uh, six, seven, eight, and then nine to twelve. So this is what I believe on the basis of uh, the kind of development, the kind of skills they required, the kind of nurturing they should have. But uh, anybody else, if you can uh, tell, this is what I believe. Yes, Thank you, uh, I would like to add a point to this, uh, Salonima. Uh, so we were uh, speaking about the Panchakosha Vikas also. So after Panchakosha okay. Vikas has been, uh, you know, like emphasized in the national curriculum framework for foundation stage as well as school education, lots of research has been done on this by the fraternity of educators. And uh, it is uh, that the, you know, like mental, I mean, cognitive development starts from the very first, you know, like uh, uh, year itself. I mean, within few days that the child is born, Okay, he will start understanding slowly the world around him. Okay, uh, if you observe few videos also, like uh, with the sounds made by the child, listening to the sounds made by the child while he is crying, we can make out whether, uh, you know, like he wants food or whether he wants to sleep or whether he wants to, you know, like uh, whether he is feeling wet under his, uh, you know, like uh, diapers and all. So it is that we don't understand the language, but as soon as the child is entering this world, why just entering within the womb of the Ayurveda says, within the womb of the mother itself, there's a connection that the child is, you know, uh, having with the uh, mother and he is naturally growing with all the information that he is getting through the mother. The best example is of Abhimanyu, who has heard uh, everything uh, when he was in the womb of uh, Subhadra. Okay, while Krishna was explaining her about how to get into the Padma Vyuha. As Subhadra sleeps by that time, even the child in the womb sleeps and he doesn't hear how to come out of the Padma Vyuha. Okay, so right from the day the child enters this world, slowly, we don't know, but the child is understanding what is happening around him. So this should be the best. I mean, uh, I just, uh, you know, like uh, try to add upon, uh, you know, uh, things uh, as to clear your doubt. Right. Thank you so much, Ravi sir and Aati ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. 
So thank you, dear participants. We really appreciate people who are coming forward to ask queries and you know also to give your feedback. Uh, so a few people are asking about the phone numbers. It, it is double nine zero eight nine two five seven three zero. I have written in the chat box. Yes, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for attending. So this is there till 29th. Our session will be there on daily basis from 7 to 8 p.m. Every, every day in the evening, you will be getting the flyer and the link to join as well. Thank you. So let us meet tomorrow again for the second chapter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone.